Chapter 7, Battle of the Beatmakers 6, August 2008. El Macambo. It was the top of 2006 when I first connected with Abbas, who was the owner of El Macambo, the venue which would house BBM between 2006 to 2008. It was a grimy kind of spot that fit very well with the BBM movement at the time, but because we just ended one of the most violent years in Toronto in 2005, dubbed the Year of the Gun, getting a venue for a hip-hop function was slim pickings. Abbas was a compassionate guy, always doing charity events and constantly trying to get me involved with his charity work. I had no problem with that, but shit, I was already doing charity work. This BBM shit was coming completely out of pocket at the time, so building a platform for hundreds of local producers was my charity and contribution, as far as I saw it. In any case, in sitting down with Abbas to get the venue, he wanted to know more about my personal life to gauge if he wanted to take a chance and rent me the venue. I had to describe the event as more of an R&B-focused show and downplay the hip-hop side of things. Just describe it as more of an R&B talent show as opposed to a hip-hop battle, and I'll be fine, I thought. Frankly, when it came to getting a venue... Hip-hop meant black youth, and battle meant the potential for violence, and no venue owner wanted to deal with that, considering this apparent spike in gun crime the previous year. But of all the things we discussed, the thing that struck a chord with him the most was the fact that I had a daughter and stepdaughter. The youngest was just one and a half years old. It never totally dawned on me at the time why he was so touched by that, but it seemed to be the deciding factor in him taking a chance and renting me the venue. Every time he would see me, the first thing he would ask is how the girls were doing. I suspect the notion that black males are not portrayed in society as being good fathers or present at all. So to have a promoter who is also a black father of two daughters must have placed me in a different category in his mind as somebody responsible and trustworthy. Whatever it was, it worked, and BBM might have been derailed if it wasn't for him opening up his venue to me. For the purposes of BBM, the venue wasn't perfect, but it fit like a glove. We finally had a venue with a stage. The setup I envisioned was beginning to take shape as producers could finally be seen and identified with the beat that was being played. In the past, you would either struggle to see who was playing which beat or you had to ask around. Now you could see them up close and personal, and if you liked what you heard, you could easily reach out. 